good guitar tone can be kind of an elusive thing. It's entirely subjective and it's up to the player to determine what's right for them. What do you wanna hear coming out of your speakers? Now, over the years, I've had the opportunity to play tons of different guitar amps, different styles, different brands, different circuits, and I've developed a few methods that work for me to help me get the sound that I want, no matter the type of amp that I'm playing. No matter how powerful it is, what type of circuit it is, whether it's a small beginner tube amp or something really expensive and hand-wired and fancy, I'm gonna show you my method for dialing in any tube amp and getting it to sound great, or at least getting it to sound how you want it to sound. These are a few techniques I picked up over the years from watching other players, players who are better than me, have better ears than me. Also, my own experimentation, trying stuff and seeing what works and what doesn't. So in today's video, I'm going to show you all about that. Now, if you want to know more about the ins and outs and great guitar tone, I made a video course all about that called the Tone Course. It's linked in the description box down below, as well as my other two courses, the Nashville Number System and Fretboard Fundamentals. And we just started work on my fourth video course, which will Will be coming very soon. If you'd like to stay updated on that, you can check out the link to sign up for my email list down there as well. With all that out of the way, let's jump in and take a look at the amp we're going to be using in today's video. So this is the Tone King Imperial Mark II. This is a Fender style two channel amp. I should point out that Tone King did give me this amp for free, but this video is in no way sponsored by Tone King. Uh, they didn't ask for any type of video. I'm not showing them this video. This is uh, my own words, my own thoughts. Now this amp is brand new to me. I've never owned a two channel Fender style amp like this. And so I'm gonna kind of show you my technique for exploring what this amp does and what it's good at and also what it's not so good at. And that's actually my first tip. In order to get the best tone out of any amplifier, you need to understand its strengths and its weaknesses. You need to understand what it's trying to do or what it's meant to do. So I know that this is a Fender style amp. Tone King designed this to do most of your vintage Fender uh, cleans to tweed style overdrive kind of sounds. So with that in mind, I already have a picture in my head of what I want to get out of this amp. And I also understand what I don't want to get out of this amp or what I'm probably not going to get out of this amp, which is any kind of super saturated, super overdriven, really heavy distorted tones. This amp's probably not going to do all that well. In other words, this is not an amp for metal players. So with that in mind, let's get familiar with the layout of the amp. We've got two channels, the rhythm channel here and the lead channel here. We're gonna start with the rhythm channel. And as you can see, we've got three knobs. We've got the overall volume, and then we've got a treble and a bass control. So this channel has what's called a two band EQ. We have a control for the treble band and the bass band. Some amps will have more control. They'll have three or sometimes even four band EQ controls, or you'll have a treble, middle, and bass with a presence control. That's just giving you more options to shape the tone. But because this is modeled after a vintage Fender style amp, we just have the treble and bass control controls here. Now, one of the first things I like to do with any amp that's new to me, whether it's a new amp that I've owned or it's one that I'm walking up to on a backline situation, something that's there on stage that I'm getting ready to use on gig, I sweep the controls to see how much control there actually is. Now, this is a trick that I picked up from watching a Matt Schofield video on YouTube years and years ago. This is what he does with his amps, and it's something that's worked incredibly well for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is dial in the volume. I'm going to start with the volume all the way down put the EQ controls at noon, just so they're kind of in the middle out of the way a little bit. And I'm gonna see what type of headroom this amp has. Because there's no master volume on this amp, I just have one volume control. Eventually what's gonna happen is it's gonna to start to break up and I wanna find where the breakup point of this amp is. So I'm just gonna play a simple chord and start pulling that volume control up. Okay, so you can see there's a pretty wide range of gain available there. The amp seems to start to break up here around the uh, four position on the knob or like the nine o'clock, 10 o'clock position. So I know that if I'm looking for a clean sound where I've got lots of clean headroom, the amp's not gonna break up, I know that I have about this much room to play with here. So we're gonna start by dialing in a nice clean sound. I'm gonna put the knob there on three and let's see where we're at.
So I like that right there. I think that's really nice. Now, the other thing to take into account is if you're on a gig or you're playing at home, the overall volume of the amp is something that's important to consider. Now, this particular amp doesn't have a master volume, but what it does have on the back is a built-in power attenuator, which is gonna scale down the output, the overall volume coming out of the speaker, ideally without changing the tone that much. So if I was on a gig, the first thing I would do is get my tone set, get my tone dialed in, and then go from there. If I'm too loud for the stage, then I'll use something like the built-in attenuator or the master volume on the amp to bring the overall level down to what it needs to be for the gig. So I'm happy with the overall amount of gain there. Now I wanna see how much control this two band EQ has. So I'm gonna switch back to my bridge pickup and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to roll that treble control all the way down. And what I'm gonna do is start sweeping it up and I'm looking for the point at which the treble starts to open up. Uh, most of these circuits, most of the potentiometers in these circuits aren't completely linear, meaning there's not an even response from zero all the way to 10. Uh, oftentimes what you'll find with an amp is that you start to turn it up and nothing happens, nothing happens, and then you hit a certain point on the throw of the pot and it opens up. And this is that Matt Schofield trick. He likes to find that point at which the control starts to open up and that's usually where he will start to find his sweet spot where he'll set the overall setting. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Just play a chord and start sweeping this control. So right there, I'm starting to hear this treble open up right here about between the five and six position on the knob. That's like, you know, noon to one o'clock. So that's where I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna do the same thing with the bass control. Now, as you can tell, that one's starting to open up a little bit sooner, right here at the two or three position on the knob. So I'm gonna start with that setting and see how it sounds. So I'm pretty happy with that as a starting point, but if you notice when I switched to my bridge pickup, it got really bright and really punchy. And while that's good for some things, for this particular clean tone, I want something that's a little warmer. So before I boost anything, like bring up the bass control, I'm actually gonna start by cutting the EQ. And that's my next tip. If there's something that's too bright or too harsh, or on the other end, if something's too muddy and too dark, rather than boosting the opposite control, in this case, boosting the low end, boosting the bass, start by cutting. This is called subtractive EQ, and this is a mixing trick that's used uh, making records all the time. Depending on the type of tone stack that's in your amp, sometimes if you're boosting an EQ band, you can actually be adding more gain into the circuit, and I don't always wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is start by cutting the high end to try and tame some of that harshness. <laughs> That's better. Okay, so now let's add some more gain. Let's turn things up a little bit. Now we switch over to the lead channel here on the Imperial Mark II, and you'll notice that even though we have three controls here, two of the controls are completely different. We don't have a two band EQ like we do on the rhythm channel. We have a tone control, and then we have a control called mid bite. And this is an important thing to point out. Not all amps are the same. Some you're gonna have typical tone stack and tone controls like we talked about, other amps you're gonna encounter have somewhat unique controls like a tone or in this case, a mid bite. Now in this case, I recommend you RTFM. 
read the manual. Most new amps nowadays come with some kind of literature that tell you what the different controls do. And if they don't, if you're buying an amp used and it doesn't come with it, more than likely there's something online to help you figure it out. And I actually was curious. I didn't know what the mid byte control was actually doing. So I looked it up in the manual. So according to the manual, the mid byte control simultaneously tightens up the bass and rolls off the high end frequencies, increasing the gain and developing a pronounced upper mid range peak. The mid byte control is key to dialing in your own particular sound on the lead channel. So you may want to experiment and observe its effects as you rotate it from one to nine. See, it's not just me that does that. Now the tone I'm going for here is a lead sound. I want something punchy and bright and saturated with lots of sustain, something that gives a lot of natural compression from the amp and something that I could swap from the rhythm channel, my edge of breakup kind of typical tone straight to this and get all the gain I would ever want without needing a pedal. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the rhythm channel and start sweeping the controls. First of all, I want to see how much gain is on tap with this volume control. Next tip is to understand how much gain is too much. Just because you can get this much saturation, this much compression and gain out of the amp doesn't mean that it necessarily sounds its best all the way up. For me, with this gain control all the way up, it's a little too loose, it's a little flabby, uh, it gets a little too saturated. So I probably wouldn't ever push it that hard. I like it right around here. <laughs> Now I want to see how wide the sweep is in this tone control here. Quite a bit. And if you notice, there's actually two things happening there. First of all, it's getting brighter. The more we turn the tone control up, the more attack and brilliance we have, but it's also cutting the low end. It's tightening up the bottom end at the same time. It's almost as if it's controlling these two bands, the treble and bass frequencies simultaneously. That's a really handy feature. So for me, I want something with these humbuckers that's a little bit brighter, a little bit punchier. So I'm gonna push that tone control up a little bit. Now let's move on to the mid bite control. Like the manual suggests, I'm gonna start at zero and push it all the way up and let's see what it does. Actually quite a bit. We're getting more mid range, more mid range bite like the control suggests, but it's also adding some gain, which is interesting too. So let's try, uh, let's try this. That's actually pretty nice. I like where that's at. And if you wanted to, you could hit this in the front end with a boost pedal or maybe even a fuzz to get even more saturation, more sustain, more compression. I think that's a really good lead sound. So that's how to dial in and essentially unlock any amp. If you found this useful, let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Are you using these tips or is this new to you? And also what type of amp do you like to play at home? I'd love to know more about that. Don't forget you can find links to my tone course as well as my other video courses in the description box down below, as well as some affiliate links to some of the gear that I use to make today's video. Uh, you can also sign up for my mailing list down there to be notified of when my new course is on its way. And you can also find out more information about the inner circle down there, which is how you can get access to all my video courses and monthly live hangs. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Rhett Scholl and remember there is no plan B.